Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform is making it easier than ever to support Black-owned brands. When you go to walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited, you'll not only get to shop products from Black-owned brands, but also learn about founders like Janelle Stevens of Camille Rose, which specializes in products for naturally curly hair. And there are many more awesome products that you have yet to discover. It's all easy to find with Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform. Join in on celebrating Black brands today and every day at Walmart. We are Black and Unlimited. Visit walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited to discover more. That's walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited. Episode 135 of the Highly Relevant Podcast, the first episode of 2020. If this is your first time listening to our show, this is a Latinx pop culture podcast where I talk with actors, musicians, thought leaders, and journalists about how Latinx culture is influencing mainstream entertainment. All right, guys, so before I get to my first guest, I wanted to tell you quickly about a new podcast I'm launching in the upcoming weeks called Brown and Black with filming culture critic Mike Sargent. You've heard him many times here on the Highly Relevant Podcast. So the whole concept of the show is to finally unite the perspectives of the two most powerful cultural demographics in the United States, Brown and Black, and change the way our entertainment stories have been told for over 100 years. There are rarely any Latinx or Black editor-in-chiefs at People Magazine or BuzzFeed, and our cultural news... Well, it's usually segregated to some vertical website and treated as an afterthought. So it's time we reclaim our stories and celebrate it with our own brand of cultural commentary and references. Do it our way. Here's a quick sneak preview of Brown and Black. This is a new podcast exploring the convergence of race and pop culture hosted by me, a Latin X. And I'm African-American or what they used to call Negro. And the whole concept about the show is rethinking how pop culture news and opinion is conveyed in America today. Mike, why is it so important for this show to exist? I think it's important for black and Latino journalists especially to be able to steer the conversation away from what it is, be able to bring up the things that aren't being brought up to enlighten in the ways that aren't being enlightened, to really shine a light on the fact that not only are we significant in American culture and not only do we influence American culture, but more importantly, diversity and inclusion are not dirty words. And with that said, I'm Jack Rico and he's Mike Sargent. And I am black and he is brown. And this is the Brown and Black Podcast. You can catch us on Apple, Spotify, Pandora, and any other podcast platform that you get your podcast. See you soon, guys. On this first episode of The New Decade, I talked to Giancarlo Canella, arguably one of the most beloved singer-actors in the Hispanic market, about his new Netflix Latinx sitcom show, The Expanding Universe of Ashley Garcia, which premieres February 17th. We get into a deep conversation on why he feels comfortable with white showrunners telling him how to play a Hispanic, how he's handled being told he's not Hispanic enough, and why he feels people will never grasp the full impact of what Eva Longoria does to push Latinx culture to American mainstream. But before I talk to Jen Carlos, it's time to give you my weekly pop culture news recap in a segment I like to call Jacked In. Let's begin with the top movie news of the week. Zoe Saldana will star as an aspiring Olympian and fencer from producer Casey Affleck. There's a live-action Aladdin sequel in the works at Disney. Aquafina's new movie will be called The Baccarat Machine. 80s actor Rick Moranis will unretire to return to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids' new franchise at Disney. And you can now watch Robert Pattinson as the new Batman in a first-look video of him in the Bat costume. In TV news, Narcos Mexico is currently streaming on Netflix. Production on Stranger Things 4 is underway. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez will appear as a judge on RuPaul TV. Emilio Estevez will reprise his role as Coach Gordon Bombay in the Disney Plus sequel series of The Mighty Ducks. And actor Rigo Sanchez has been up to series regular for season 5 of Animal Kingdom. Switching over to music, Mark Anthony announces YouTube project Opus the Recording Session series. Billie Eilish releases James Bond theme song No Time to Die. Vin Diesel makes his Dembo debut on Coronao Now Remix. Justin Bieber will be on The Late Late Show with James Corden for a whole week. Janet Jackson is going back on a world tour. And Nora Jones sings in Spanish with Lila Downs in a new single, Querido Alguien. Listen. You
Jen Carlos. Hey, ¿cómo está, Pablito? Congratulations on the show, my brother. Thank you so much, man. I'm, I'm so pumped about this, bro. And it's so good to, to, to talk to you, man. And uh, we, we are excited about this one. Hi, I'm Ashley Garcia. I'm so excited! I am the youngest person ever to earn a PhD. I just got a job at JPL in California where I'm going to make robots for NASA. Deal, Victor! What are you doing here? Moving in, like we planned. The name of the show is called The Expanding Universe of Ashley Garcia. Um, tell me a little bit about the premise and the character that you play. The premise of this show is like, is, is what excites me about it the most. You know, it's a, it's a 15-year-old girl with two PhDs, um, you know, studying uh, to, to build robots for NASA. That's her big dream. And she gets an internship at JPL. Um, you know, just just right there, like right off the bat, it, it just sets the standard so high. And in, in this world of comedy and entertainment, it, it makes it it's such a fun and colorful world. But at the same time, it's like I can't help but but see the impact that this is going to have, you know, directly or indirectly on, on little girls that are watching it and kids that are watching it and saying, oh, you know, it's, it's not just idolizing uh, uh to be uh, idolizing the superstar, idolizing the actress, idolizing the pop star. And all this girl is like into science. And we have an actual partnership with JPL. So we have like live motion censored robots on set. It is one of the coolest experiences that I've ever been a part of. It's interesting that Seth Curlin and David Kendall are the showrunners uh, and, and, and the people that are writing a lot of these episodes and getting a lot of the Latin acts. But it's always interesting to me how... Um, if you're non-Hispanic, which usually happens, you have a lot of non-Hispanics creating stories for the Latino experience. I mean, look what happened with American Dirt, the book that Oprah, big backlash that happened because there's somebody that's non-Hispanic writing about the Latino experience. How do you see that? How, how do you feel comfortable with a, when, when a white guy is telling you how to be Hispanic or how to be a Latinx and this is how you should speak? For sure, for sure. I mean, look, I think it's just, it's all about perspective. The fact that a white guy is even bringing the conversation to the table, I think that that creates an opportunity to to uh, educate. It creates an opportunity to have a, a, a civilized dialogue. And as Latinos, we need to speak our, our mind and speak about our experiences. But if it wasn't for that white guy bringing that story or having the interest of bringing that story to the table and creating the conversation, that is how cultural trends are created. That is how, how social education happens. Someone decided to bring it to the spotlight. So I just feel like instead of bashing the guy, even though sometimes, you know, there's some things that are said that, la verdad que dan ganas de... Verdad. Like, really, really, comes down, it, it really, you really do. Some, as Latinos, we need to understand those are our biggest opportunities. Those are the biggest opportunities we need to capitalize on. And we need to say, hey, man, that's awesome that you decided to bring this to the table. But let me tell you a story and let me give you some insight. And let me tell you that was that was that was for sure the dynamic that happened in the show. You know, out of all our writers, there was one, I believe, two Latinas. Jessica Lopez on was one of them. Exactly. Jessica Lopez was one of them. Exactly. Y hay otra, otra chiquita que se llama Luis Mira. Se me, uh -huh. me olvidó el nombre ahorita mismo, pero I, I believe that she was of Hispanic descent as well. And, um, but the truth is, I was like, we all played a huge role in that. Like I sat down with Seth and David, they were extremely and genuinely excited about our culture. Mario Lopez gave more than two cents on, on, and was very hands-on. Mark Roberts, um, was the initial guy with the, with the idea and it developed and became this. So there were a lot of Latinos that had hands on deck. Um, I myself, I sat with him. I told him that I started singing in backyards and I became a quinceañera singer and talk, talked to them about the culture of, of quinceañeras and quinceaños and whatnot. And, and we actually have an episode that is about that in, in some way, shape or form. I'm not going to give a, a, out too many details, but the point is like they were so receptive and they were so interested when we were doing the quinceañera piece, man, we had directors that were, let's see, Eva Longoria directed, I mean, um, and amongst others that were also of Hispanic descent. So there were a lot of Latinos on deck that put their two cents in, more than two cents. 
And I'm, I'm telling you, como Latino, que yo a veces, like, I've seen, I've seen products that do not reflect whatsoever what our culture is all about. I, I really don't feel that that's the case here. And, and I think it's also like, the story is not just for Latinos. I mean, some of us happen to be Latino on the, in the cast, but there are, there are people from different walks of life, from different cultural backgrounds. And I think it's about the mesh of all of those cultures coming into one universe which is what America is all about right. and what the world has become. There are Latinos everywhere in Europe, in Asia, in the Middle East, in North America. We're, we're everywhere. So it really does reflect the reality that we are living and that, that, that melting pot experience. You know? Did at any moment were you like, okay, I just want to get out of Telemundo and Univision. I want to get out of this Hispanic market because the mainstream in Hollywood, that's where it's at. That's where the power's at. That's where the money's at. Uh, and I just... Because you could pass off as a gringo, dude. You know, you you don't necessarily look like what uh what America thinks that a Latino looks like. So you know, My I had superpower. The power <laughs> of God. Carlos Ponce was telling me the same thing. I walk in looking American, and then I go ha. Once they give me the role, I'm like ha. I got you, pendejo. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> What's it called? But that's the beauty of being a Hispanic. I mean, dude, let me tell you something. That 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 has to change as well. Look, I I remember when I got the the, the chance to play. Um, you know, they're definitely in this industry. You know, sometimes sometimes there isn't fair play, and and that's a reality. And whoever says different is because they just they're blind to it, or they 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 haven't been exposed to it. But there definitely is. You know, the industry, what we call the industry, there, there isn't always fair play when it comes to gender equality, when it comes to, you know, uh, cultural equality, uh, religious equality. I mean, you name it, down the line, right? Everyone has their way of thinking. We're all programmed a certain way. And, we're, we're, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reality. But there's, to me, the, 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 biggest, the biggest thing one can do. It does not matter if you are a woman, a man, black, white, brown, whatever. Preparation is the most effective skin color, the most effective mm. religion, the most effective. Because when you walk in there ready and you are undeniably great, those limitations that they put for us can become our biggest asset. Because if we allow, them to, if we allow those limitations and those labels to push us to over-deliver and over-achieve, we are now becoming better than most. Because of what we're up against. And I've always just tried to let it drive me and, and nourish me instead of piss me off or hold me back. I remember I was, I was doing a press conference when, when they give me the opportunity to play, to play the lead role. The Fox did a musical, a lot passion, of musical called the passion. The passion. Yep. Tyler Perry. Yeah, exactly. I was, I was extremely elated when you were announced. Cause I was like, Oh my God, un Cubano Americano. Wow, I can't believe he's Jesus Christ. <laughs> and honestly, when I was watching it, I, I, I forgot that you were Hispanic. I, I forgot that you were Cuban. I forgot your Hispanic background. You were just Jesus at that moment, you know? I mean, that was my goal, man. That was my goal. I really, like, I got asked on the carpet. They were like, oh, how does it feel to be the first, um, you know, Cuban-American Jesus? Or, or, or the, or, and they were like, oh, a hot Jesus and this and that. And I'm like... I, I don't want to be, I, I just want to be remembered as, as a guy that, that really, you know, slipped into those sandals and did the best, the best work that he can and, and, and brought joy and hope to, to the people watching, which we really, really need. I told them I was, I didn't go in that room thinking, oh, I'm Latino. Are they going to give it to me or not? I went in that room prepared. I went in there, you know, with my 200% and I was like, I want to, I want to really do this with honor and with pride and with love and, and we gave it everything we we had you know we really we we just happened to be prepared for that opportunity and it oversighted you know that they, they they didn't they didn't they didn't look at me as a latino at that point they looked at me as the guy for the role the guy they right. were looking for you know for whatever reasons it may be and i feel like you know i, I remember being on set with with cristela which is a a guest appearance on on our on our show, the Expanded Universe Society, and I love her to death. And we were we were joking around, and she's like, "I'm like, oh, we're one big family, isn't that?" And she's like, "Yeah, but you don't look like us." Oh, she said to me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 in the Cristela uh, way. No, by the way, in the Cristela way, right? 
in the Cristela way because, by the way, she didn't mean it in any bad way. She she's hilarious and she's incredible. I mean, she's my oh, dear yeah, friend. She's a comedian. Her book yeah. is amazing, by the way, and her show is incredible. But that those words stuck with me, and I and I said, man, at some point as Latinos, we also gotta like embrace ourselves in all our different right. colors and all our different you know shapes and sizes because like if we empower each other, whether we have green eyes or white hair or, or I'm sorry, or black hair or white skin or whatever. But if we empower each other as a community with our differences and all, then th- those are the people that are going to bat for our culture and for our people and represent us. And, 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 you know, and everyone has their, their sauce. Everyone has their, their special ingredient that, you know, with preparation and all that stuff allows them to move up forward and upward, you know, and continue to bring the culture to elevate the culture we're either our worst enemies or our best friends and our mind can be counterproductive we just gotta like you know hold ourselves accountable for our thoughts and our core beliefs about ourselves and our people and we need to start becoming our best friends instead of our worst enemies for sure that's definitely true uh and thanks for that Giancarlos. now when you were at telemundo you 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 were a case study of how a media network could create uh, a sensation, uh, a phenomenon, uh, 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 the biggest pop star in the market without having to go through the traditional uh, standards that the industry went through, which is you got to go through a, a record label. They got to build out your, you know, your music. But it seems like your music and the novella, that mixture created some magic. And with your look, uh, estalló. So it just fireworks went. When this was happening. It was, it was, it was a big moment for us. It, when this was happening and you, you left Telemundo, everybody was like, oh, my God, what's going to happen to his career? Telemundo was the was 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 the bubble that, that that kept him as the biggest pop star. You went over to Univision. You were there for for several years. And then all of a sudden you started slowly crossing over into the English language market. Was that because the the Spanish language industry has had reached its limit for you? Was that ceiling already hit and you just needed a new challenge in your life? Or are you trying to juggle both at the same exact time? Because I've seen a lot of bilingual actors try to do that. Most of them, when they leave into the English yeah. language industry, they never come back. So in your case, what is your vision for your career? You know, that's that's an incredible question, man. And, and the way you laid it out is just so on point because I've always been a purpose-driven, big-picture uh, kind of guy. My dad was the president of of the Hispanic uh, Inventors Foundation in the U.S. and has 11 patents and is a super creative, business driven, uh, smart guy. You know, and and you know, my my parents raised me to to believe and my siblings to believe that there that we can we can really when when we really want to do something mm-hmm. that if you apply a plan, a, a step by step plan because sometimes. And amb- a great, great, you know, ambitious people and 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 big, bigger picture vision people. Um, it th- that only is useful when you accompany it with a with a step by step plan. You got you got to see the whole layout, you know, and and really execute step by step. And I I've always been extremely, extremely I can't even stress it enough proud of my heritage and of my culture and being Cuban American. And not never, never stepping foot in Cuba, not having the opportunity out of respect to my dad and the exile community and everything that they that they've gone through for the last, you know, six decades um, because of the repression and oppression that the government has put on our people. I, I just I not being able to get to know my roots. It, it really it really embarked me on a journey of like feeling at home or making making a home or wanting to feel like I belong in every other Latin country that I went to. It, it gave me the opportunity to not be so regionalist and say, okay, if I can't go and help my people or I can't go and get to know my people, I'm going to go and get to know everything else that it means to be Latino. I, wanna, I want to... So when I was, I lived in Mexico for six, seven months mm. and, and, and there, there were, there were key people that really, really supported me, you know, <laughs> from the gates, uh, you know, and it just, for me as a, as a, as a Latino American, cause that I'm both, you know, I'm both, I'm not 50, 50, I'm a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I was born and raised in the United States of America. 
And I'm, I, I, that's part of my story. So when we were doing um, these, these, they we're having the success in the Latin culture, I said, what, who's telling our stories to the American people? Who's telling right. our stories? Who's bridging right. that, that gap together, you know? And, and it really was one of the, one of the biggest things that I saw. I, I didn't see a lot of representation of that, you know, 200% generation. It really doesn't exist, both, Giancarlo's. Of, no, it, it really, there is a huge void. So that's always been my purpose. I'm like, look, at some point people are going to get it. And I, it's not that I'm turning my back on this. We've continued to launch music in, um, in Spanish uh, since then. We've continued to do projects like Telenovela with Eva Longoria uh, in Grand Hotel, which I play obviously a Latino. I always try to bring our sauce to the table even in these American projects. Now, uh, the show on Netflix. So that Latino culture is very much a part of who I am and is instilled in everything that I do because I don't do what I do just for the progress of my career. I do what I do with purpose. And I feel like we need representation, not just in the Latin side of things, but on the American and mainstream side of things to go and share our music and share our stories with the world. Now, we go tour in places that People usually don't go to Nouvelle Caledonie by Australia and uh, the, 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 the French Polynesian Islands. And people are like, what are you doing there? You're singing in Spanish there? <laughs> the Romanian, you know, we go do concerts in Spanish. I'm like, damn right I'm singing in Spanish there. That's what we need to be. We need to spread the word of how amazing our culture is and how amazing we are. So I, 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 I'm a purpose-driven guy. And that's really, that was my main goal. I wanted to transition over into different markets, you know, and uh, and really share our culture and share our stories with the world. What is your relationship with Eva Longoria? You've worked with her in Grand Hotel. You've worked with her in Telenovela. Now you're working her uh, with her again uh, uh, while she's directing the expanding universe of Ashley Garcia. How would you describe your relationship with her? And what have you learned from her as well? God, that, that is my... That is my queen, my uh, mentor, my sister. Um, I absolutely love uh, what what she does for us. I mean, I, I I don't think I don't know if people will ever understand or grasp the 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 just the full potential and the full impact of what she has done for us. You know, the way that she gathers us, the way that she opens the doors to her house, the way that she you know proves with example that you know that there's no limit to what we can what we can achieve as latinos and and you know i remember clearly being on set and she was directing and she was acting and she was on a plane out because she had to be somewhere that night and she was coming back the next morning to edit and then someone asked her like why are you doing that and she's like why not because i can mm. and and it's like it's just this, this power it's like people tell you I, I remember, I remember being in Dallas in a room full of people and all of them, there was not, out of all of them, there was not one Latino. And I, we were planning the crossover um, uh, and uh, we were finding partners, looking for partners to do that transition into the crossover market. And then they were like, yo, but you're already like doing great things in Spanish. Why do you want to, why do you want to do it? Why do you want to do it in English? Just stick to Spanish, you know? And I'm like, what do you mean? Why would like, How is that even a question? Yeah. Like, why are you asking? You, you, you idiot. Like, why, <laughs> I, I, I just don't understand what you're, what you're telling me right now. And it's like, I just feel like that's one of the biggest things I've learned from Eva. Not just, not just the power of like just self, self empowerment is huge, but believing in yourself. And, and the most important thing, I think her legacy is about spreading the knowledge and spreading the wealth. Do not keep in the shadows. Do not think that, oh no, I got to keep this to myself because this is my secret sauce or my secret ingredient. No, in empowering the development of other empires is how you build a conglomerate. Like you need to spread the wealth and spread the knowledge and empower others because it's just, it's the only way that we create something bigger than ourselves. And your door is not fully a door until it becomes a platform for someone else, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I just, I've, I've learned, I've learned that from her in such a big way. She's so loving. She's so humble. 
so successful and she just finds a way to win in every stage of her life. That woman doesn't stop. You know, she doesn't believe in the word failure. She doesn't believe in the word loss. She just learns as she goes. And she, she's, she, I, I, I really feel that people haven't seen half of what she's going to accomplish. I think that she's, she's just about to enter the best stage of her professional career. She's going to be one of the best female directors Up. in the game. I, I, I'm going to add to that. I'm going to add to that. I actually think that she has the potential and skills uh, to become president of the United States of America. I saw her speak I one day so. at an Obama uh, speech that he was going to do, and she presented him. Floored at the way she spoke. Dude, I got chills because she wasn't even reading off of a prompter or anything. And I was like, how is she doing that? And the way she galvanized the crowd, the way she inspired the people there, man, I I just said, I have no idea why she's not in a political career where she can truly make change on a, on a, on a, on a law level. Listen, she, from the shadows, I mean, you know, Eva, I've, I've been through some, uh, presidential campaigns with her and and what she does uh, she opens the doors to her house to to uh, political leaders that she really believes are going to champion uh, uh behind our people you know when you see a, a woman that has a fortune and can just sit back sip on 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 some cocktails and just enjoy what she's built no this woman is relentlessly you know continuing to push the envelope for herself she went back to school um, to study Chicano history and, 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 and get a degree in it. And she really wanted to understand, understand that culture and understand the history. If you know our history, mm-hmm. we can build our future in a much more efficient and better way. I saw the John Leguizamo show. Oh my uh, God. From Tell Warren. me that wasn't amazing. Incredible. Amazing. Incredible. It was a life changing thing for me. Me too. Me too. Being born and raised in the States. They really leave out a lot of things in our history. Like when it's it's just, it's it's our involvement uh, in history. Play so empowered, so empowered, and and it was it was just beautiful to watch. I I agree with you, brother. I think that Eva has all the potential in the world to be a world leader, mm-hmm. a, a world. Yep, leader. a head of state. And um, <laughs> and I and I think she's already I, she's already well on the way. And doing things that that a lot of people in the public eye they won't even notice, but but it's just her love goes beyond the Latin community. She just really she really wants us as Latinos to have a seat at the table, and for all of us to get along in the best way and know each other's value, you know. And we she just wants everyone to know everyone's value. It's like hey, we won. It's not that we 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 had to fight to get no. We've had a seat at the table since the beginning of time. You know, we've had a seat at the table since the beginning of time. And it's just, um, she's just fighting relentlessly behind the scenes and on the scenes uh, to make sure the world knows that. So we can just all treat each other equally and, and move, to a, move forward to a better future. Man. The name of the show is called The Expanding Universe of Ashley Garcia. Comes out February 17th on Netflix. And Giancarlo Canella plays uh, Theo, Vic- Theo Victor, Uncle Victor in the show. Um, why do you think that Latinx stories are harder to write or are harder to, to be greenlit than, than just Spanish language Latin culture? You know, it's, um, I, I think it's about identifying a brand and uh, and I think it's about, you know, little by little, you know, uh, just you, you got to make it available for, for the audience. And and there's been such a such an absence of, of Latinx stories in the past that people like myself, since we didn't have those type of shows growing up to watch, we just grew other habits. We're like, OK, so since there's no show that really represents who I am, then I got to watch something. I got to do something. So we became accustomed and we became used to um, just mainstream America content or, or this and, you know, or that. And I, I just think we got to stick to it. We got to stick to it. And we have to develop that culture the same way, you know, white America has developed theirs, the same way the African-American community has developed theirs. You know, um, BET was not what it is, you know, all these, all these channels, all this content, it starts somewhere, but it's got to start. So 
So it's just a matter of, of continuing to fine tune and continuing to bring the conversation to the table until the stars align and until it's just the hit show and that opens the door for others to come. But we got to keep pushing. We got to keep at it and we got to create that culture until uh, the people in suits and the people that make decisions and write those checks, they just, they understand the importance of it. They understand um, why it needs to happen and they need to understand that it's the, it's the long haul. It's the long play. Right. They're like, I hear people say, if the females don't see this show, they're going to stop supporting or they're going to stop. You know, I, I understand that. And yes, I mean, as an audience, we need to understand, Hey, like it would be so awesome if you guys just so happen to give it a shot and it, and see how good it is and enjoyed it and supported it. But at the same time, it's just got to be good. If you got to ask someone to see something, then you're doing something wrong. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, you, you, like, no one asked me to see Star Wars. No one asked me to see <laughs> uh, you know, some, <laughs> something that I really want to see. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's just, yo, do good stuff. Do good stuff. Do great stuff. And if they see it, whoever does see it, they're going to know how good it is and they're going to keep coming back for more and they're going to tell their friends and they're going to tell their neighbors. And, you know, and, and eventually as we continue to bring this conversation, this letter next conversation to the table, it's going to blow up, man, because we have an audience. There are a lot of Latinos in the States that were born and raised here and that are like me. And we speak the same language. We get it. You know, we understand. And, uh, and, um, and little by little, man, as these stories continue to come out, I'm telling you, whether it's this one, whether it's another one, it's going to hit big. And, uh, and yeah, it's gonna, Latinx stories are going to be just as big or bigger, uh, I believe, bigger than, than any story for that matter. I love that. Um, and before we wrap up here, Giancarlo's, is it hard to do comedy? Oh, my God, bro. I, I, feel, like, I feel like most of humanity, we, we, we are more familiar with, uh, with crying or with suffering or with drama than we are with being happy. You're so, right. Uh, it, it comes, it comes natural to just argue in a scene or cry in a scene or be hurt in a scene. Cause it's an emotion that we're um, all just a little too familiar with. Um, I, I have so much respect for comedy. Like anything else. It's, it's the timing. It's the tone. It's the, it really is to see an actor do, do comedy and and perform it in a brilliant way the body the mind the thought process everything has to be in such a beautiful mm-hmm. flow and you have to really be listening to the other actor you have to be as an ensemble listening to each other because we have to work off of each other's timing and it's been so brilliant eva's been a huge coach for me and for us on the comedy side uh, Jody, our first director, and all the directors that went that went through the expanding universe of Ashley Garcia, so incredible. The cast, these kids: Connor Houston, Reed Horseman, uh, Bella Padaris, Paulina Chavez. They are naturals. Wow! Like, what I'm telling you that I was, I was like, in, I was in awe. I was like, <laughs> what is going on right now? Like, I feel like we've been doing this for three seasons. This is crazy. It was incredible. And then Mario Lopez, like, yo, I was on set with Mario. And we, he, he has like a recurring role in the show. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is a moment for me. Like, yeah, I, I remember by my the sister bell, watching man. Saved by the Bell Slater. And I was like, I'm like, I'm, I'm with Slater on set right now. <laughs> like, this is really happening. And, man, and that's so awesome, like, dude, that you got to experience that. It was incredible, man. So he, he's been a great coach and a great leader as well. And again, Seth Curlin and David Kendall, I, we couldn't ask for better leaders and a better partner in netflix robert prince is really our our captain and and brought this story to the netflix family and said we got to do this this story has been 10 years in the making really 10 years 10 years in the making mario took this to netflix with seth curlin 10 years ago and notice latinx stories 10 years ago not a thing not a thing but Ten years later, it's a thing. Here we are. So, <laughs> it's it's oh, it's a thing. It's, yeah. Giancarlo's Canella is Victor in the expanding universe of Ashley Garcia that premieres on Netflix on February seventeenth. Giancarlo's, thank you for being on the highly relevant podcast. My brother, thank you so much, man. I really enjoyed this. Appreciate you. All right, man. Take it easy, buddy. Mm-hmm. 
And before I wrap up here, here are three Latin tracks you might want to add to your playlist this weekend. Ay, mi querido, hasta, hasta, yeah. hasta que, Tatiana Hazel. Hasta, hasta que. Atomico, Jungle Fire. Something, Los Amigos Invisibles. And that's it for episode 135 of the Highly Relevant Podcast. I want to thank Jen Carlos Canella for dropping by for our first show of 2020. And if you'd like to support this podcast, please spread the love on social media and tell all your friends about it. You can reach me on Instagram at Jack Rico and my Facebook page at Jack Rico 40. Remember, it's only through your support that the show can grow. I'm Jack Rico. See you next week on another episode of Highly Relevant. Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform is making it easier than ever to support Black-owned brands. When you go to walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited, you'll not only get to shop products from Black-owned brands, but also learn about founders like Janelle Stevens of Camille Rose, which specializes in products for naturally curly hair. And there are many more awesome products that you have yet to discover. It's all easy to find with Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform. Join in on celebrating Black brands today and every day at Walmart. We are Black and Unlimited. Visit walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited to discover more. That's walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited.